everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Messi Mary, popularly known as Moss with the Difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. Today we are going to be talking about nursing intervention and scientific rationale. I know a lot of students are having difficulty in writing the nursing intervention and scientific rationale. So that is why by the end of this class we will be giving various examples of scientific rationale and also nursing intervention. So I will advise you stay tuned. For those that have not watched our previous video on nursing diagnosis, nursing objective and evaluation and also introduction to nursing care plan, you have missed a lot. All you have to do is to check for the other videos and watch so you understand this better but before we go into details kindly click on the subscribe button turn on the notification button so you don't miss out let's go there all right welcome back like i earlier said today we are going to be talking about what nursing intervention and scientific rationale what do we mean when we say nursing intervention nursing intervention nurses are intervening nurses are doing something so nursing intervention are activities they are what they are activities a nurse perform to achieve client goal they are activity what a nurse perform to achieve a particular goal intervention should be focused on eliminating or reducing the etiology of the nursing diagnosis etiology simply means the cause your intervention should be focused on what eliminating the cause of that problem for that client so whenever you hear nursing intervention what is talking about is what am i going to do to ensure that my goal which i created my objective which i created will be accomplished so that is what nursing intervention is all about then also the one that follows suit co hands together with nursing intervention is the scientific rationale what is the scientific rationale the scientific rationale is simply talking about your explanation the rationale is also known as scientific explanation are the underlying reasons for the which nursing intervention was chosen. Your nursing intervention is what you are to do, the activities you are to do to achieve that goal. Why the rationale is the scientific explanation of why you are doing what you are doing. Why I'm tepid sponging? Why? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm giving diversional therapy. Why? I'm placing my patient in a semi fowler's position. Why? So that is what scientific rationale is all about. Why are you doing that particular thing? I know most students have challenges tackling that, knowing the reason why they are doing that particular um, nursing intervention. So we'll be giving examples at the end of this class. We'll be giving examples of scientific rationale and also nursing intervention of some nursing diagnosis. Then that takes us to the various types of nursing intervention. The first one we have here is independent nursing intervention when we say something is independent you as a nurse you are supposed to know this is what you are supposed to do you don't need somebody out there to tell you this particular thing do it for example a patient is running temperature it is your duty as a nurse to tap its sponge to expose nearby windows right that is an independent intervention an independent activity an independent action of a nurse the one that that nurse with their own skills they have been trained to do it so that is why it's what an independent intervention or independent role. Then the other one has name implied dependent. It means you are that you don't have the right to do it. You have to depend on the doctors. You have to depend on other, on the other healthcare practitioner to carry out this particular duty. That is why it is what dependent intervention. For example, you've seen an intervention. They say give prescribed medication. That is not. An independent nursing intervention but rather a dependent nursing intervention because you are giving what the doctor has prescribed then the other is collaborative collaborative simply means you are doing it together you are joining the nutritionist you are joining the dietitians you are joining the radiographers to carry out this particular um, nursing intervention so these are the three types of nursing intervention we have. The first is the independent, the second is the dependent, 
and the third is what the collaborative nursing intervention then that takes us to some particular things i would like us to know when writing our nursing intervention the first is it should be specific and clearly stated it should what it should be specific and clearly stated use only abbreviations acceptable in institution as students i advise you don't even abbreviate give them the full meaning i see students saying give prescribed pcm it's not everybody that know pcm is paracetamol so the best thing is to like write it in full don't abbreviate i don't support abbreviation when it comes to examination then the other in line with the client's value culture and belief this is in line with uh, the client's value. You can't say, uh, for example, you are giving a, um, you are treating for anxiety. You know, sometimes they tell you invite a clergyman. You get. You can't say invite an imam. You can't say invite a priest. It's better for you to join his clergyman or invite a spiritual, a spiritual leader, because that particular person you are inviting a priest for might be a Muslim. So when you're in the, um, in the world, when you're in the world, the person's religion will tell you what to invite. The person's religion will tell you what to do for that particular person. But in terms of exam condition, you can write invite a clergy because it wasn't specific if the person is, an, is a Muslim or a Christian. So whatsoever you are going to be doing for that patient, it should be in line with the patient's culture, in line with the patient's belief. Then also, achievable with resources and time available. This is specifically for those that are in the world. Your nursing intervention should be, um, should be achievable with what you have. You can't be saying check the SPO2 of the I checked the with SPO2 of the patient when there's no XPO2 machine in the world. So you have to what it has to be what achievable with resources and time available. Now let's take out some examples of nursing intervention and scientific rationale of pain, ineffective breathing pattern, and some older nursing diagnosis. First nursing intervention and scientific rationale we'll be dealing with is that of pain. But before I go into pain and how to go about it. How I normally do mine in the example, I know the first one and I know the last intervention I'm to write. For every question, I already know the first and the last intervention I'm going to write. In the sense that, if it is pain as we have here now, the first nursing intervention that comes to my mind is assess for signs and symptoms of pain. When it's ineffective breathing pattern, which is difficulty with breathing, the first thing is assess for the signs and symptoms of ineffective breathing pattern. I would say assess for the signs and symptoms of dyspnea. If it is um, imbalanced nutrition, less than body requirements, I can say assess for the signs and symptoms of weight loss. Assess for the signs and symptoms of anorexia. That's why this patient is not eating. Because all of them, no matter what you do as a nurse, you have to assess. So my number one is always assess. Then the last one I used to write, like the last one it could be number four, it could be number five, is usually give prescribed because that is a dependent role of a nurse. So I can say give prescribed analgesics or pain, right? I can say give prescribed oxygen when a patient is having a difficulty with breathing, right? I can say give prescribed IV infusion when a patient is having deficient fluid volume. So all my prescribed, prescribed, prescribed is always coming at the ending while access is always coming first. Just as you already have two. How many is remaining? Is it not two? So I will, I will not be to go. But today I will be sharing with you a lot of intervention in such a way that when you get into the exam hall, you will be able to write something down. First of all, we'll be talking about pain. We know what pain is. In our local language, pain is what the patient says it is. It is not what I say it is. It is what my patient says it is. That is pain. So but the first intervention I have here is assess for signs and symptoms of pain. I already told you that. And the scientific rationale behind that is early recognition of signs and symptoms allows for prompt intervention. Then the second uh, scientific uh, nursing intervention is encourage patients to describe and rate pain on a scale. That is your rate, pain rating scale. Ah, madam, in a scale of 1 to 10, how is the pain like? Why are we telling those patients to rate this pain? So if they rate it, it guides the use of analgesics because once your patient tells you, Oh, this is the kind of pain I'm feeling, it will guide us when it comes to what selecting the analgesics we are going to give to that patient at that particular time. Then, another intervention for pain is provide calm and restful environment. A patient that is suffering from pain should not be in an environment that is noisy, so you have to provide what a calm and restful environment free of noise. 
Why? It increases effectiveness of pain management. When the place is calm, it increases what? Effectiveness of pain management. Then another is assure him that his need for pain, pain relief, is understood and will be attended to. Assure him that the need for pain relief is understood. There's this feeling a patient gets when you say, oh, madam, I understand how you feel. It makes, there's a feeling when somebody tells you, I understand how you feel. How do you feel? There's this kind of relief you have. So when you tell them you understand, it goes a long way. It relieves fear and anxiety. As pain management method are not effective if a patient is tensed. Pain management method will not be 100%. It will not be effective as it would be if a patient is tense, if a patient is scared. So that is why you have to provide a calm environment and also reassure them. It makes them, it reduces the anxiety, it reduces the fear about their pain. The other intervention I have, oh, the common one we know, provide diversional therapy. Provide what? Diversional therapy. What diversional therapy does is that it's simple. It takes the patient's mind away from the pain. What are diversional therapy? Your conversation with the patient is a diversional therapy. Watching television, reading newspapers, they are diversional therapy. They help to divert the patient's attention. They remove the patient's attention from pain. Then another nursing diagnosis, another nursing intervention, I mean, is position the patient properly. For example, a patient that just left the theater, depending on the type of pain, that will determine the position to put that patient. The position you put that patient will help to reduce pain in that affected area. So I didn't generalize it because I don't really know which position. Because different pain with a different position. So when you get that question, you know the position to use. Then the last one, and my best nursing intervention, sorry, it's not diversional therapy, I guess it's a mistake. The last one is give prescribed analgesics. We are talking about pain. So it's going to be what? Give prescribed analgesics. For the analgesics, it could be prastamol, it could be morphine, it could be pentazosine, depending on the severity. So that is that for the scientific intervention and the scientific rationale for pain. This next nursing intervention I'm going to be talking about, you can apply it, you can pick some and apply for ineffective breathing pattern, ineffective airway clearance and ineffective tissue perfusion. So the first one I usually have, like I always tell you, is to assess and report signs of diminished oxygen circulation, especially for ineffective tissue perfusion. And the rationale behind it is that early recognition allows for prompt intervention. Then the other one I have here is monitor vital signs, especially pulse and respiration. Like I will always tell you, anything related to breathing at all, vital signs is very, very important. So you have to what? You have to monitor the vital signs of your patient, especially what? Respiration and pulse. Why? Both your vital signs, we all know the definition of vital signs, they serve as baseline data. Then another nursing intervention for these are um, place patients in a semi fowler's position. Like seriously, yes. Why are we placing this patient in a semi fowler's position? Semi fowler's position can be 90, can be 45, depending on if it's high semi fowler or low semi fowler's. So, semi fowler's uh, position prevents the abdominal organs from pressing on the diaphragm you know this is your this your diaphragm this is your thoracic region and this is your abdomen if you are lying flat the abdominal organs will be pressing on the diaphragm but if you sit down 90 degree 45 degree the abdominal organs will not be pressing on that diaphragm that's that for placing the patient in a semi fowler's position then another is suction the patient properly you know when you suction a patient, it helps to clear the airway so that oxygen can go in and carbon dioxide can go, uh, go out, right? So the rationale is that it clears the airway for easy passage of oxygen and CO2. Then another that is monitor the oxygen saturation level with pulse oximeter. We all know what pulse oximeter is all, all, all about, all useful. The pulse oximeter helps to check the oxygen saturation of a patient. So it detects changes in oxygenation. When your patients start having 80, 85, 82 um, XPO2, then you have to know that, oh, there's a problem. We have to give prescribed oxygen. We have to inform the doctor. It 
so when you are checking the expert so it helps to know how oxygenated the tissues are in the body then another you know the last one i always say is prescribed don't put prescribed at the beginning always put them at the last very very last so then i have give prescribed oxygen what does oxygen does oxygen helps to increase ox oxygen transportation to cells it prevents hypoxia what is hypoxia hypoxia simply means low tissue you understand there's low oxygen i mean <laughs> low oxygen so giving oxygen helps to prevent hypoxia and also increase oxygen transportation to cells you can also give prescribed uh, administer um, your blood administer blood transfusion so you can administer blood transfusion especially for the packed cell volume we all know the red blood cells helps to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide so when you administer the packed cell volume it helps to uh, transport oxygen and carbon dioxide so there are a lot of nursing intervention associated with this but this is the one i'm dropping the last one we'll be treating today on our youtube channel is going to be for deficient fluid volume like i always say the first is what assess for signs and symptoms of deficient fluid volume why it's actually early recognition allows for prompt intervention i'm giving this one in case you are stuck in the examination hall and you can't get the four you need always remember that there is assess and also the scientific rationale is that early recognition allows for prompt intervention then the other nursing intervention for deficient fluid volume is monitor fluid intake and outputs alongside with a specific gravity you have to monitor the fluid intake with all this patient is taking in and also the urine output the fluid output that is going out from this patient why it determined fluid balance and rehydration status you know when the specific gravity of the urine is very very high it simply means wow there is dehydration the urine is not concentrated maybe the fluid is not enough in the body or something so you have to monitor the input and output and also the specific gravity then another intervention is monitor and record vital signs especially blood pressure and heart rate why because a decrease in circulating blood can cause hypotension and tachycardia a decrease in the circulatory blood can cause what hypotension that has reduced blood pressure and tachycardia now not that is encourage adequate fluid intake encourage your patient to take water if the patient can tolerate let the patient be taking in fluid orally it ensures adequate rehydration then another is administer prescribed intravenous infusion that also what ensures adequate rehydration then another is administer blood products as prescribed it's possible the blood is not enough the blood is short the pcv is low the rbc is low this is low this is low what you have to do is to administer the prescribed blood product this helps to correct fluid loss if you notice for the various intervention i have been given the first is usually assess and the last is usually not give prescribed administer prescribed anything prescription anything that you are not doing on your own accord it should come last those are the dependent role of a nurse and that should always what should always come last don't forget that in your exam when you are asked to write a good nursing care plan you are expected to just give at least four don't give two, don't give three intervention and scientific. You are supposed to give what? Four scientific rationale and also intervention. When you are having hypertamia, what would you do? When a patient is running temperature, a patient is having hypertamia, the temperature is 38 degrees Celsius, what would you do? The other things that should be coming to your mind, oh, I have to tap its point. I have to expose nearby windows. I have to check the patient vital signs regularly. So these are the nursing intervention when it comes to hypertamia. But all other intervention and scientific rationale will be discussed on our Telegram group chat. For those that have not registered for our Telegram group chat, do so so you also hear the voice notes on other scientific rationale and nursing intervention. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching our video. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to drop your comments or questions in the comment section. And don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. See you in our next class. Bye.